In western Ukraine today, President Volodymyr Zelensky hosted Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, both architects of a deal last month that allows Ukraine to export food amid the war and a global food shortage. But, that, but has that U.N. broker deal been effective in achieving its goals thus far? Nick Schifrin has the story. The UN called it a beacon of hope, one of the world's breadbaskets once again able to export. For three weeks, ships carrying Ukrainian grain, sunflower, soya, and wheat have left Ukrainian ports through a Russian blockade. Today, three of the guarantors of that deal met in Ukraine's west to assess how far they'd come and how far they still had to go. There is a global need for more ships that can export Ukrainian produce in a secure way. Our country will be a guarantor for global food security. For years, Ukraine helped provide that guarantee. With Russia, it exported one quarter of the world's wheat. But the war, combined with a historic drought in the Horn of Africa and complications from COVID, have created a global food crisis. The UN broker deal is designed to allow Ukraine to export 22 million tons of grain. The first Africa-bound ship left yesterday. The brave commander carries World Food Program purchase cargo destined for Ethiopia. 23,000 metric tons of wheat will go to a nation with 20 million people facing hunger. But so far, most exports are not going to those with the most need. Of 25 ships, more than a quarter have gone to Turkey. Iran and South Korea each receive five. Next on the list, China, Ireland and Italy. And the exports so far are a fraction of what's needed. 700,000 tons of food have left Ukrainian shores. 20 million tons remain trapped in Ukrainian silos. Let's have no illusions. There is a long way to go before this will be translated into the daily life of people at their local bakery and in their markets. Supply chains are still disruptive and energy and transportation costs remain unacceptably high. And some of the exports aren't arriving at their intended destinations. The very first ship that left Ukraine arrived not in its original reported destination, Lebanon, but in Russia ally, Syria. Syria also received stolen Ukrainian grain on a Russian ship that arrived just today. And for more on food exports from Ukraine, we turn to Joe Glauber, senior research fellow at the International Food Policy Research Institute. He previously served as the chief economist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Thank you very much. Welcome to the news hour. Uh, how much of an impact right now is this deal having? Uh, it's small, but it's it's hopefully will get bigger. I, right now, you know, roughly 700,000 tons have moved. That's about a tenth of what Ukraine does on a monthly basis uh, during their peak season. And this is their peak season as we come into wheat harvest and they want to be shipping that out to the rest of the world. 700,000, just to put that in perspective, you know, the goal is for 20 million <laughs> tons to be exported. Yeah. Is, that, is that even realistic? Well, it, it, I think they have serious storage problems. Remember, they have a crop from last year. That's been trapped inside of Ukraine. They're in the process of harvesting a, a, a wheat crop. And in the fall, they're going to have a, a corn crop and, and barley crop and other crops that are going to come in. What that's put stress on is the storage capacity they have. Even with this uh, uh, potential of exporting a little bit more out of those Black Sea ports. Uh, one of the good signs that we've seen so far, according to the Secretary General today, uh, is that prices have come down for the rest of the world. Uh, the FAO says its food price index fell by 9 percent in July, the largest decline since 2008. So is that a sign that this deal, uh, at least initially, is having some positive impact? Well, it's a whole bunch of factors, actually. Uh, one is Russia has exported a lot more than I think was in initially thought. We have a good crop coming out of Canada. But again, no question, the fact that we're actually able to get grain out of Ukraine through those Black Sea ports uh, is a very positive uh, for, for world food prices. Uh, as we pointed out, uh, these ships have gone to Turkey, South Korea, even Ireland and Italy, only one to the Horn of Africa, at least so far. Why? Well, a lot of the grain that, that left, uh, that's left uh, Ukraine in the last co uh, couple of weeks through this corridor were ships that were in, uh, docked in uh, the uh, Ukraine ports before the war. And so they were targeted for those buyers. And though that included, yes, a lot of 
corn going to Europe. It included uh, a little bit going to the Middle East and then, and then some wheat going to the Horn of Africa. And so we are, I think that will, will the shift will change as we see more wheat uh, uh, coming out of Ukraine. The, the Joint Coordination uh, Center, the, the UN run uh, body that's, that's coordinating this in Istanbul said to me today that while there have been 25 ships that left Ukraine, 20 are arriving in Ukraine now. Uh, is that a sign uh, of what you were just suggesting, that, that this food is now going to be going to more places? Yeah, I think I think we will see a, a mix of buyers. Remember that that if you look at, at who uh, the, the markets that, that Ukraine would typically ship a lot ship to, it's a lot in North Africa. It's a lot in the Middle East as far as wheat's concerned. For corn, and they ship a lot of corn around the world. A lot of that goes to China. A lot of that goes to Europe. Now, some of that goes to the World Food Program and others that you know help uh, uh, alleviate. Uh, hunger and other other important things like that. Beyond this deal, do you believe that there's enough being done to ease a global food crisis? Well, the, the real issue, I think, long run for Ukraine is ending the war and, and bringing back the their agricultural system to some sort of normalcy. I think with Ukraine hampered by an, a war going on and the fact that they aren't shipping as much as they could ship normally. Uh, that that means lower prices for producers. That means less production. And I, because of the, the important role Ukraine plays in world markets, I think that means continued tight supplies. Because overall global stock levels continue to be fairly low, that means any sort of disruption in terms of droughts or other things could really cause spike, price spikes. So that's that's real the real concern longer run as we move forward over the next year or so. And, and how important is it to solve some of these problems, given how acute this global food crisis is? Yeah, I think I think it's, you know, it's, it is extremely uh, uh, important to, to at least get this corridor up and running, at least make sure that, that we can get exports back to some sort of uh, level that's closer to what they normally would be shipping. But obviously, the real the real goal is to get an end to the war. Joe Glauber, thank you very much. Thank you.